Well, good morning, Jeffrey and Nando. How are you two today? Really? No reaction at all? Seems a little strange. I said, how are you today? That's better. Oh, and good morning, Lionhearts. And there he is, working on an early morning treat. Aren't you? Is that your treat? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Space Invader was here. Rad, as you guys know, if you watch my channel on a regular basis, he is my favorite, absolute favorite street artist. That's even what Jaws' middle name is. And I knew he was in town last week and kind of putting up art all over the place, and I just walked past this. Classic. All right, I do need to load up the car this time. Well, hello, Lionhearts. Well, a couple of weeks ago, Los Angeles celebrated Cheech and Chong Day, and so today, so are we. We're gonna head downtown we're going to go to the Grammy Museum, which is celebrating the 40th anniversary of Up in Smoke. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, we've made it. All right, now we just got to walk over to the museum. Now, a couple of weeks ago when they declared it Cheech and Chong Day, they actually had a big celebration at the Roxy, just like in the movie, and Cheech and Chong both showed up in the uh, classic convertible. Maybe if vlogging the museum doesn't work out, we'll, uh, we'll take the bar test. Well, here we are. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you probably know that one of the earliest comedies I ever saw as a kid was Cheech and Chong movies. I saw Nice Dreams, Things Are Tough All Over, and Up in Smoke. Uh, my dad was a big fan of them, and so I'm a longtime fan myself. I've vlogged the filming locations of Strawberry's house, did it then and now, not too long ago, so I'll link that in this video. But I'm really excited now knowing that the Grammy Museum's decided to pay homage to the guys. A very unlikely comedic duo, I guess you would probably say. They were very cutting edge for their time. And uh, they're still funny to this day. So it's kind of cool that one of the major exhibits right now is a collection of the original props from Up in Smoke, 1978 classic. I can already tell you that it's changed since the last time I was here. The box office used to be out here, so that's gone. Now, I've been here before, shown other exhibits here before, so I'm just going to show you a couple of my favorite things and then go to the Cheech and Chong collection, not do the whole uh, museum again. All right, let's do this. Since they have the Pete Seeger exhibit, and I didn't get to see that last time I was here, I will show some of that. This is on the top floor. There's a uh, one of his famous sweaters that he's wearing right there in that photo. And then one of his banjos, which is actually pretty cool. Look, there's uh, there's stuff written around it. This machine surrounds hate, and it forces it to surrender. Very cool, very influential folk artist. This is really cool. This big wooden bowl, it says, was a, a salad bowl handmade by Pete and used at the Clearwater Festivals, and it says that at the very bottom he carved a note that reads, Beacon, New York, this bowl made from a log washed ashore at the Beacon Sloop Club, 1984 PS. And then here's one of Pete's uh, handmade flutes that was gifted to him. Some of his clothes, his hat, his axe. There he is. Now I definitely can't come here and not show you guys the Celebrating Michael Jackson exhibit. I mean, that's one of my favorite things here always. And I can never spend enough time on it, so let's take a look. Here you can see they've got a couple of the sequined gloves. That one's awesome because it's blue with, um, with stars in it. That one's weird because it's got like spikes and stuff at the uh, on the knuckles and on the fingertips. It's almost got like nail polish on the fingertips. And check out this. I think they do alternate some of the stuff in here occasionally, but for the most part, this Michael Jackson exhibit is here for the for the long haul. 
then there's one of his classic fedoras. And there's a photo of uh, Michael with the woman that co-wrote Man in the Mirror, and he's wearing that jacket. And there's that jacket right there. How cool is that? His dangerous all-access pass. Copy of the lyrics of Man in the Mirror. So it says this was the the actual glove that Michael wore for the Victory Tour. Now I'm sure he had other gloves that he wore for maybe photo shoots and posters and different things, but it says this one was the one that was worn for the Victory Tour and when he debuted the Moonwalk. It says that this was the jacket that he wore when he toured South Africa in 97, and I think we all recognize that jacket. Of course, and it's signed. How great is that? Gotta love it, there he is dancing with it. Classic thriller jacket, I love it. And then of course, We Are the World, which was recorded at Chaplin Studios. Now it's known as Jim Henson, but at the time it was Chaplin Studios. And of course, Elvis. And of course, B.B. King, the great, maybe the greatest bluesman of them all. Definitely what they, you know, they call him the king of the blues for a reason. So, that's the extent of my favorite stuff on this floor. We're going to head down now. Go to the next floor. This is actually a three or four floor exhibit. Well, a four floor museum, rather. This is great. They have copies of handwritten lyrics of great uh, songwriters and you'll notice right away there's a couple of my favorites there's Hank Williams, Willie Nelson with Chris Christopherson, Stephen Stills who ties into our vlog yesterday and Graham Parsons how about that look at that there's his lyrics for Ooh Las Vegas and of course you have to include the Gershwins now the last time I was here the exhibit on the floor below us was actually I think like Katy Perry so we'll see what it is today now this is kind of cool. This is the start of part of the exhibit for the Up in Smoke celebration. And what this is, is these are Cheech Marin's personal guitars. He has a, what's called a Blazing Chicano guitar line, where he has um, some of his favorite Chicano uh, artists paint these guitars and put images that are uh, synonymous with their style of art. Like this one is actually um, Jaime from the Germs. He created that. You can even see it says germs right underneath the uh, the bridge there. That one's done by John Valdez. Now here's a massive, massive Grammy award if you ever want to take your picture in front of one of them. It's right here. <laughs> and right here on the pillar you can see they decorated it like it's a, uh, a roll of phone photo booth film. Now here's the next case, and this is mostly just um, merchandise that they've released honoring this stuff. So you can see it's like an action figure of both of them, which is hilarious. That's I, <laughs> that's great. Then of course there's a bong, there's uh, a light set so you can plug that in your house and have their heads glowing. Skateboards. A pretty cool Chong shirt. Can't lie about that one. And uh, and then more skateboards. Now here's another really cool section of the exhibit. We've got a, an updated photo of both guys with a short little movie and a lot of their album covers. I actually met Chong and have that album signed by him, which was a real cool experience. I was able to tell him that I, uh, that I watched Cheech and Chong when I was about five or six years old and he said, I gotta ask you, did you understand the humor? And I said, yeah, I, I mean, I didn't know what, what marijuana was, but I got all your jokes and everything. I mean, at least I found it funny. He goes, that's really cool. I love hearing that kind of stuff. So here you go. Here's the storyboard from um, the 1970s. Some of the scenes that they ended up filming for the movie. And there's like a discrepancy. A lot of people say that it was a real rogue production, but they actually have, right here, you can see here's the shooting schedule. They actually had permits for all the places that they filmed, so it was all legit. Here's their call sheets. 1977 says uh, The Adventures of Pedro and Man. That's what it was originally going to be called. Or at least that was the working title. You can see it right there on the, uh, on the header. And then here's them filming out on, I'm guessing that's the PCH. Because that's when uh, 
when he pulls up and sees the two girls waiting for the bus. That's really, really cool to see. There's Lou Adler. Here's uh, another shooting schedule. Let me see if I can get myself out of the footage here. Here's an updated dailies that says what shots they needed for the day. So that was uh, June 21st, 1977. That's when they would have been in the process of filming this. And I do actually have another Cheech and Chong vlog. Actually, a couple of them I'm going to do in the upcoming future. Now here's a storyboard from, uh, from the movie again, which is really cool. I love seeing the, uh, the drawings and everything. There's the script with an updated uh, Cheech and Chong logo on there. The Adventures of Pedro and Man or Cheech and Chong's Greatest Hits. Oh, and there's, uh, there's a scene from the Roxy when they were doing the rock fight scene. <laughs> Earache my eye. <laughs> That's awesome. I think they performed that too when they uh, when they had their big event that night. And then there's a photo. I've actually got to see concerts on that stage, so it's pretty cool. You know, I saw uh, the legend Rocky Erickson perform there. So to know that this scene and Roxy and Elsewhere by Frank Zappa were recorded on that same stage is pretty cool. And of course, here they thank the people that are like directly responsible for this exhibit. And of course, how cool. It's the actual people from it. Chong, Cheech, family, and Lou Adler. Now let's take a look at this case. Right away, they've got a, uh, an early 8x10. It says Sleeping Beauty. Photo 1976. There's some uh, more photos of them with fans. Some original photos. The original album, them doing album signings, which is cool. This says, this is a, attached as a copy of the note which enabled us to speak to Chong after his appearance in Seattle, and it's for the advocacy and survival of American Indians, which if you, you know, if you saw the movies, they, they kind of go into that in some of the movies. They show a lot of Native American things. Here is a, uh, a letter from Lou Adler, or to Lou Adler, written by Peter Sellers, and it says Peter was known for his starring role in The Pink Panther. Um, Lou Adler pitched a concept to Sellers that included an opportunity to work with Cheech and Chong. Unfortunately, Sellers turned him down. Three years later, Cheech and Chong would go on to star in their own film, Up in Smoke. And it says, uh, Dear Lou, I've had, I've, I have now had a chance to read Simple Simon and the Weed Stock. Also, Tommy's notes on the sketches from the LPs. As I expected, the material is hilarious and had me on the floor. I'm sure it will make an enormously successful film, but I don't see how, even bearing in mind Tommy's original ideas, I could usefully and purposely fit in with the boys. I also feel that my range is insufficient to cope with the areas in which they operate. It's difficult to make myself clear in a letter, but I think the boys are so brilliant that they just don't need anyone else to, if you like, if you like get in their way. Oh, so he's saying that they're just too good that anybody else would would distract from them and he said I'm sending the script and notes back under separate cover if you're coming this way please give me a ring as I don't expect to be in LA until after the fall signed Peter how cool man that's a letter from Sid Bernstein giving them a contract to perform at uh, Carnegie Hall there's the uh, entertainment requirements for a Soledad prison that's cool. It says Cheech and Chong performed with the Pointer Sisters and Waylon Jennings in the 70s. For that, uh, I'm guessing that was a Soledad prison gig. And then it says, um, what else? The album cover for the wedding album. Them in Stage Magazine. National Academy of Recording Arts and Science. Nomination letter. By the late 70s, Cheech and Chong had already received multiple Grammy nominations for their comedy records. Cheech and Chong received this nomination in the midst of filming their debut album, Up in Smoke, which was released in 1978. Er, debut film, sorry. Here's some more of the album art. Some of the original albums and everything. Los Cochinos. And then it says, this was 
the, uh, the original stage diagram for their theater shows. Set up for their performances on theater stages, the diagram includes instructions for lighting, curtain control, and microphone placement. And then uh, here's one of their scripts and it says, in Mexican dialect. <laughs> So yeah, they had to ham it up. I mean, you know, I'm sure most of you have seen that Cheech has had a pretty vast career since all this. That was uh, that was an accent and everything he was doing in the movie. That that wasn't uh, especially exactly how he spoke in his everyday life. Here's some Western Union uh, telegrams from Lou Adler to each of the guys. <laughs> This one says, um, Cheech, Tommy has been spreading a lot of rumors about you, but don't worry about them. Have a nice opening, Lou. And then the one right below it says, Tommy, Cheech has been spreading a lot of rumors about you, but don't worry about them. Have a nice opening, Lou. <laughs> says, after discovering Cheech and Chong during one of their early performances at the Troubadour in West Hollywood, Lou Adler began managing the duo, producing many of their comedy albums and directing their first movie, Up in Smoke. Adler showcased this, his own sense of humor and sent these telegrams to both Cheech and Chung prior to their live performances in New York City. Way cool. There's one of their early press kits. An article about them in Rolling Stone. Early flyer. One of their early t-shirts, which is cool. That's the album I have signed. And a newspaper advertisement for... That's hilarious. Looks like a... Uh, like a rolling paper ad, I think. Now here's a 1971 memo from Lou Adler, and it says to all employees from Lou Adler, the Cheech and Chong engagement at the Troubadour is sold out and oversold. We're sorry, but we are not. So think about that. They were already selling out the Troubadour in 1971, and they didn't make their first movie until 1978. That is a flyer from uh, what's happening in Los Angeles in December of 1972. This is cool, they're showing that little documentary in here kind of, and it's saying that they went through three cinematographers to make this and that they didn't even really do that many close-ups for the movie. Now since it doesn't say, I assume both of those stools and the microphone are both, uh, they're just props for the exhibit, they're not actually used by them, or if they were used they weren't, uh, it wasn't like they took the same stools everywhere, so. Pretty cool exhibit. And they knocked it out of the park on the merch. Absolutely knocked it out of the park. Up in smoke socks. Way cool. Very good exhibit. Very good. I didn't see any props or anything from the movie. That's kind of what I thought they were going to have here, but pretty cool to see some of the production notes and things like that. Good job, Grammy Museum. gang like I said I was lucky enough to meet Tommy Chong and he was super cool so he signed my record and I'm gonna call it a night hope you guys enjoyed seeing this and if you're in town I honestly I can't tell you enough how cool that museum is to go check out and right now is the time everything they have there right now is pretty pretty cool so have a great night and we'll see you all tomorrow goodbye